Now we can move on to filling out the IMM 5669 Schedule A form. Click the Edit button to access this online form. Here you will see some information to read before you will get started. Remember, refer to the guide which has additional instructions for you to read. Although the guide mentions that the form must be completed by the individual refugees themselves, there is a paragraph that specifies that when using the PR portal, it is acceptable for their sponsors to input the information gathered from the refugees on their behalf. I also want to point out that you should disregard this sentence here, as it only applies to the PDF version of the Schedule A form, which will not be used when submitting via the PR portal. After the application has been submitted, a copy of all of the completed application forms can be downloaded by the primary sponsor. When you are ready to work on the Schedule A form, click the Edit button for the first person listed here. The opening paragraph for this online form may seem confusing since it mentions that it must be the PA filling in the form for themselves and on behalf of their family members who are over 18 years old. What this means in relation to the online application is that the principal applicant will be responsible for providing the information required to complete each person's Schedule A form for dependents who are over 18. This is important to understand because there is only going to be one signature required for all of the online forms. It will be the principal applicant who will sign the declaration and consent form on behalf of their dependents. In relation to the information provided in all Schedule A forms and the generic application form. We'll explain more about the principal applicant's declaration form in a later segment. The first bit of information is auto-generated by the system because the program assumes that the information being entered into this particular Schedule A form belongs to the principal applicant and not their dependent. Under Schedule A, Personal Details, the name information is also auto-filled based on the information inserted into the principal applicant's profile page. Scrolling down, you will need to enter in the principal applicant's full name in their native language script. To do so, you may want to use Google Translate where you can search for the translation you would like to see. So in this example, I have opened Google and then typed in Google Translate English to Tigrinya. Once the translated characters are visible, click on the Copy button here then paste the characters into the correct field in the Schedule A form. The date of birth is auto-filled in based on the principal applicant's profile page information. Below that, you will enter in the information for the principal applicant's father. Then you will enter information for their mother and click on the button to continue. This is the questionnaire section where you will simply Click on either yes or no option for each response. As you can see, there are quite a few questions to answer. If you answered yes for any of the questions, you must provide details in the space provided at the end of the questions. Then click the Save and Continue button. This section is where you will insert education information. Enter in the number of years completed for each level, Enter zero where they did not obtain a particular level of education. Next, provide details about each secondary and post-secondary school attended. If no diploma was issued, then insert not applicable. And if necessary, click the button to add information for another school. Then when you're finished, click save and continue. The personal history section is where you will provide information about what the refugee was doing over the past 10 years or since the age of 18. For example, you would include any employment history here. You will start with the most recent information, such as what they're doing now. And in the from section, you would enter the applicable year and month that the activity began. And under the to date, 
enter in the current year and month. Here, you will enter the job title if the person was working and in which city, town, or territory country they were in. If the person was not working, they would enter in what they were doing, such as studying, traveling, if they were retired or in detention, etc. Next, you will enter in their status in that country, as well as the name of their employer, school, or facility as applicable. Click on the Add Another button to enter in another activity to provide the information on what they were doing before this current activity. You must make sure that you do not leave any gaps in time. So enter the applicable information. So in this example, the person spent one month traveling by boat to the country of asylum. If you made a mistake and want to start over, you can click on the remove button. You can continue adding activities going back 10 years or since the age of 18 by clicking the add another button as many times as needed. Then click save and continue. This section called memberships and association with organizations. If the refugee belonged to or associated with a political, social, youth or student organization or trade union or professional organization, you would insert detailed information here. But if they have never had a membership or associated with any of these types of organizations, then you would enter, I have never been a member in the name of the organization box. You can also add additional entries as needed or click and save to continue. Similarly, the government position section is where you would enter details about any position they held in government, such as civil servant, judge, police officer, or employee in a security organization. If they did not hold any of these types of positions, you would enter none in the country field. You also have the option to add more than one position if applicable. Once this section is completed, click the button to save and continue. This next section is where you would enter any military or paramilitary service, including mandatory or compulsory service. Provide complete details here for each country that the refugee has served in the armed services. If the refugee has copies of their service records, be sure to upload them to the portal under the additional supporting documents section for submission with the application. If the refugee has not served in the military or paramilitary service, simply enter not applicable. Again, there's an option to add more than one record of service if needed. Click the button to continue when you have completed this section. And this section is where you will list all of the addresses where the refugee has previously lived. Again, begin by filling in details about their current address. If this is the principal applicant Schedule A form, the first address entry will have most of the information already auto-completed. But if you need to edit the information showing here, you would need to go back to the principal applicant's profile page. You will need to include all the places they have lived since their 18th birthday or the past 10 years. You should not enter any post office box addresses, and you will need to provide actual physical location addresses for where they have lived. Click on the Add Another button to add more than one address. When finished, click on the Save and Continue button. Now you're finished with the first Schedule A form, so you can move on to the next one if there are any more listed here or click on the button to complete and return to the application.